The Queen by Richard Brassey on the occasion of the Diamond Jubilee. The Queen's family. Great-great-grandparents Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. Great-grandparents King, King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. Grandparents King George V and Queen Mary. Mom and Dad, the Duke and Duchess of York. Princess Elizabeth was born in 1926. Her dad, Albert or Bertie, was the second son of King George V. At her christening, she cried so much that she had to be given gripe water. It was the last time she, she ever cried in public. Her great-great-uncle, Arthur, was one of her, of her godfathers. Arthur's mum, Queen Victoria, had been born over a hundred years before, in 1819. When Elizabeth was less than a year old, her mum and her dad went on a tour of Australia and New Zealand. She stayed with her grandparents, the King and Queen, and their pet parrot, Charlotte. The King nicknamed Elizabeth Lilibet. It was six months before she saw her parents again. They returned with three tons of toys which people had given as gifts for her. For her fourth birthday, the king gave Lilibet a Shetland pony named Peggy. A few months later, Elizabeth's sister, Princess Margaret, was born. They had a nanny named Mrs. Knight and a nursemaid named Miss MacDonald, who was known as Bobo. Bobo was the only non-royal person allowed to call the princess Lilibet. Sixty years later, long after Elizabeth became queen, Bobo was still bringing her a cup of tea every morning. The Duke and Duchess of York liked to call their family We Four. When they had time, they all enjoyed nothing better than a pillow fight. Dad's older brother, Uncle David, often dropped by and joined in. Every day, Elizabeth and Margaret dressed alike. Sometimes they visited Mr. J. M. Barry. He was a very good storyteller. After all, he did write Peter Pan. They spent their holidays visiting all the royal palaces with the king and queen and at Glamis Castle, where their mum grew up. It's said to be the most haunted castle in Scotland. But their favourite house was the Little House, a child-sized cottage which was given to them by the people of Wales. When Elizabeth was eight, Dookie arrived. Dookie was her first corgi. Elizabeth and Margaret had a new governess, Miss Crawford, Crawford, known as Crawfee. They became very fond of her. When Elizabeth was ten, her granddad, the king, died. She was so sad she thought she shouldn't play. Then Uncle David decided he didn't want to be king because it meant he couldn't marry his divorced girlfriend. In those days, a divorced person wasn't allowed to marry the monarch. So her dad, the next oldest son of George V, became King George VI. He used his last name, George, although the family still called him Bertie. The new thing, they had moved into Buckingham Palace and were waving from the balcony. The royals often wave from the balcony on great occasions. Although she was now heir to the throne, Elizabeth's mum and dad wanted her to do things other girls did. A group of girl guides was formed which met in the gardens of Buckingham Palace. The other girls were expected to curtsy to Elizabeth. Margaret became a brownie. One day, the princess went to tea with Crawfee at the YMC YWCA in Tottenham Court Road. They even travelled on the underground. Elizabeth did not expect to have to carry her own teapot to the table. They'd hoped not to be recognised, but a crowd gathered to stare. When the Second World War broke out, Elizabeth and Margaret were sent to live at Windsor Castle, 
which was safer from bombs than London. Elizabeth had lessons all by herself with an absent-minded schoolmaster from a nearby uh, boys' school. Sometimes he quite forgot he wasn't in a class full of boys. At 18, Elizabeth joined the women's army. She learned how to change the tire of a truck. The other girls slept in huts, but she went home each night to the castle. Then the war ended and it was back to Buckingham Palace at the balcony with Prime Minister Winston Churchill to celebrate. A few years earlier, she'd met a prince from Greece called Philip. Soon his photo appeared on her desk. The king and queen liked Philip and said that he and Elizabeth could get married. Two nights before the wedding, a big party was held at Buckingham Palace. The king led the guests in such a merry conga that the queen of the Netherlands, Tyra, fell off. After the wedding ceremony, it was back to the balcony. A year later, Prince Charles was born. Princess Anne came along two years after that. The king had become ill. He died while Elizabeth and Philip were on a safari in the bright sunshine of Kenya, staying at the Treetops Hotel. Elizabeth was now queen. She hurried home. The young queen was, queen was met at Heathrow Airport by the elderly Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. It was a gloomy winter's day. On the morning of the coronation, Elizabeth and Philip left Buckingham Palace in the antique gold stagecoach for the ride to Westminster Abbey. It was a drizzly day. Among other kings and queens in the procession, Queen Saluti of Tonga ignored the rain and waved cheerily from an open carriage. The Abbey was stuffed full of lords and ladies in their robes. Elizabeth sat on the same throne which had first been used by King Edward I, 650 years before. The Archbishop of, Ca of Canterbury placed the crown upon a head and trumpets sounded. A few months, months later, Charles and Anne were left at home while the new Queen and Philip set off to, to tour the Commonwealth. They visited Bermuda, the Bahamas, Jamaica and Belize. Sometimes Elizabeth looked grumpy. It was hard to keep smiling in the bright sun. Then to Fiji and to Tonga, where Queen Saloti entertained them. In New Zealand, the Mahoris the welcomed Her, Majesty's, Her Majesty with a haka. In Sri Lanka, the royal couple saw the Perahera, a relig religious festival with 125 exotically robed elephants. Finally, they started for home. In Libya, the spanking new royal yacht, Britannia, met them from England with Charles and Anne on board. They hadn't seen each other for six months. For the next 44 years, HMY Britannia would be Her Majesty's floating palace. Queen Elizabeth has seen 12 prime ministers come and go during her reign. She'll probably see quite a few more. Her first, Winston Churchill, was 52 years old than he was 52 years older than her. David Cameron is 40 years younger. She meets her prime minister once a week and tells him what she thinks about the way he's running the country. But he doesn't. She he doesn't have to take her advice. She has four children: Charles, Anne, Andrew, and Edward. Eight grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Charles, the Prince of Wales, is heir to the throne. His son, William, is next in line. He is the son of Charles' Charles' first wife, Diana, who died in a car crash. Charles' second wife is Camilla. William, William is married to Catherine, known as Kate. The Queen has had as many as 11 corgis at, at any one time. The Queen's main house is Buckingham Palace. Here she knights people, presents them with medals, holds enormous garden parties in the summer, gives lavish dinners for visiting heads of state, 
and waves from the balcony. At the weekends, she usually goes to Windsor Castle. Summer is spent at Balmoral Castle in Scotland and Christmas at Sandringham in Norfolk. The Christmas decorations are never taken down until she leaves in February. The Queen is happiest in the countryside, especially in Scotland. The Queen likes horse racing, corgis, afternoon tea and her commonwealth. The Queen dislikes, she doesn't like, stranger petting her corgis, Grr. appearing on TV, beards, three-piece suits and brown shoes, long speeches. She has to listen to a lot of speeches. The Queen's great-grandfather, Edward the Seventh, liked holding his birthday party in summer and every monarch since has had two birthdays, a real one and an official one in June with trooping the colour and a balcony appearance. She's already the oldest British monarch ever. 2012 will mark her Diamond Jubilee, 60 years on the throne. In 2015, she'll overtake Queen Victoria to become the longest reigning British monarch, although she still has a way to go before beating the world record. 